Hey, good morning, everybody. Pastor JC here. I hope everybody's doing well and you are walking in the blessing of God today. And so uh, it's, it's Tuesday. We are in the middle, almost in the middle of Thanksgiving week. Uh, some of you probably will have Thanksgiving day off. Some of you may not. But I hope that whatever your plans are, that you are safe and that you have a happy one. If you're spending it with your family, if you're spending it with your friends, however you choose to spend Thanksgiving, I hope it's a great one for you. I want to remind you today to get set. You know, at the beginning of a race, when the runners are getting ready, the individual who's going to start the race will say, on your mark, get set. That means get ready, get prepared, and go. I want to read a passage of scripture to you this morning that's found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And this is what the Word of God says. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. The writer of Colossians here makes a very distinct differentiation in this passage of scripture. And he says, set your heart on things above, set your mind on things above. Set your heart and your mind. Why do you think he would say that two different ways? Why do you think the differentiation? I think it's important for us as believers and I think we need to understand this. The heart symbolizes the things that we love the things that are important to us, the things that we set our affections on. And as such, we tend to invest time and energy into those things, the things that we love. But look what the Word of God says in, um, in the Scriptures. In 1 John chapter 2, he says this, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away, and also its lusts. But the one who does the will of God continues to live forever. So he tells us, the, the writer to Colossians says, set your hearts on things above, the things that you love. Take inventory of the things on which you set your affections. The scripture says we're not to love the things of this world. That doesn't mean individuals. That means the things of this world. The things this world has to offer, the money, the power, the fame, the material possessions, all of those things are temporary. And if we love those things, more than we love God, then we will have our reward simply here on this earth by the pleasure of the things that we love. But if we set our hearts on things above and we fall in love with Jesus Christ and we fall in love with the things of God, then we are investing in eternal things. We are setting our affections on eternal things. And our reward, although we may have some rewards of that here on this earth, our reward will be eternal, not temporary like they are for the things of this world. Because the things of this world are fading away. They're dying. They're passing away. They'll be gone tomorrow. You could buy a brand new car today. And the second you drive it off the lot, it already has depreciated substantially. And 10, 15, 20 years down the road, that car may not even be around anymore because it bit the dust years ago. Things of this world are fading away. They are dying. And so if we set our affections on the things of this world, if we love the things of this world so much that that's what we seek after and that's our only desire, then we will, we will attain our reward from those things simply from the pleasures of this earth and of this world. But we've got to look higher. We've got to set our affections. We've got to set our, ha our heart higher on the things of God. But he also said in verse two, set your mind 
on the things of God. Why the differentiation? I believe it's because the heart symbolizes the things we love and the things we set our affection on. The mind symbolizes the things which control us. Your brain, your mind is the control center of who you are. And that's why the enemy knows if he can get your mind, if he can lure your mind away, if he can distract your mind, he can control your actions. He can control who you are. I think that's why the word of God is so clear to us about being renewed in the transformation of our mind, allowing our mind to be renewed and transformed to be set on the things that are above. Because there's a lot of things in our lives that can very easily control us. We can be controlled by our money. We can be controlled by a relationship. We can be controlled by a, an addiction or a habit in our lives. We can be controlled by greed. We can be controlled by unforgiveness. We can be controlled by hatred, envy, bitterness, jealousy. All of those things can control us. How does that play out in our lives? Well, if I'm angry at you and I'm bitter against you, what's gonna happen when I see you? My actions and my words are gonna be controlled by what's in my head. And if I allow that bitterness and that anger to remain in me, then the way I respond to you is going to be hateful and bitter and biting, and it's not going to be healthy. That's why it's important for us to set our minds on the things above. Because when we set our minds on the Word of God and on a relationship with Jesus Christ, it changes our mindset. Set our hearts on things above, set our minds on things above, and it changes the way we relate to our world and to our loved ones and even to our enemies. Think about Christ. His heart was for the world. It was for humanity. That's why he came and he gave his, his life on Calvary for us because of his great love for us. But think about the mind of Christ because the ones who beat him and nailed him to a cross while he was hanging on that cross, he could have been entertaining all sorts of thoughts of revenge or how to get back at them or hatred towards them, and yet he didn't. He, his mind was set on things above. His love led him to the cross. His mindset on the things above led him to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So get set, church. Get your heart set, get your mind set on things above, and it will truly, truly affect how you relate to the world around you and how you respond to those who are even hateful towards you or angry towards you. It will change how you respond to them. So get set because God has a plan for you. And until you get yourself set, you can't run this race. Paul had himself set. His heart, his mind was set on things above. And so at the end of his life, he was able to say, I have run a good race. At the beginning of my race, the Lord pulled that starter trigger on that gun and said, get set, go. And Paul began to run with everything in him. And at the end of his life, he said, I've run a good race. So I want you to get yourself set this morning. Get yourself set. Because some of you may be meeting with family and friends that maybe you have some anger or, or bitterness or unresolved issues with. Your heart and your mind needs to be set on things above so that you can speak life and speak love. You take care of yourselves today and just know that this old pastor loves you and he's praying for you. If you need anything, reach out to me. Crossroads Church, don't forget, there is no midweek service this Wednesday night. Enjoy the time with your family. God bless you all. Take care.